at the Cards Against Humanity Theater sitting down with Susan Glynn. With over 10 years of experience, we talk about her rise from student to coach. With her truth and comedy approach, she's one of my favorite improvisers to watch on stage. Was there a moment in your career where you felt like, I'm going to have to play harder because I'm a woman? I mean, I think that was there from a very early, very early. Um, and hopefully I can say this delicately without mm -hmm. insulting anyone. Uh, but very early, when I first started here back in 2010, there was a pretty heavy culture of um, male dominance over the community. Like mm -hmm. there, there was, it was very male dominated still at that sure. time. Sure. And um, that was from the old school. I mean, that's, you know, that's how you used to go to a review at Second City and it'd be four guys and yeah. two women, where now it's a little more even. Um, but it was definitely very male dominant. And we, I felt like when me and my fellow performers, my like closer friends in improv, when we started, it was very, there was a negative vibe in some ways. There was like more of a competitiveness. That between was, women and women or between men and women? Between pretty much everybody. Oh, but definitely okay. women and women, that was there too. Sure. And there are women that I've had issues with early on who mm -hmm. are now friends of mine because sure. there was this like already cultivated like feeling of like there's not enough room for all of us right we gotta who's the funniest who's the best we gotta fight for the top spot for the like few spots that are available for women um because even when i started the herald teams mm -hmm. were majority male so it was like yeah there was this built-in competitiveness between women to be like the funniest person in the room or the the smartest person in the room but then also there was like the guys there were i mean i will not name any names but i did right. feel like there were certain people who felt like women aren't funny women don't deserve time on stage women are here just to kind of like serve the scene rather than like be the force behind the show or right. like actually create like be the out there and be the most like Represent well represented. We weren't as well represented at the time. Right. So what What year do you believe that that started to change? That's a good question. I think it started to change. I don't know if it was like a specific year, but mm -hmm. for me and my experience, I felt a change probably about four years in. So maybe like around twenty fourteen. Now I don't know if that was just me being like I don't care anymore. Right. Or like dealing with my shit and being like, I don't need to feel competitive with other women. There's space for all of us. There's no need to like compete with each other. Or if it was like just a newer wave of comedians coming mm -hmm. in. But things have been evolving to me yeah. in that way. But then again, I can't speak for the experience of people coming into the scene now and mm -hmm. what they feel uh, starting out and you know taking classes at IO or Second City or wherever they might be. That, that might still, you know, be there when those in those early stages for them. Sure, sure. Um, have has have you received a compliment from any of your idols that you felt kind of validated validated you as a performer? Well, um, my favorite team for the longest time is Cook County. Okay. Cook County Social Club. Right. We they played every Tuesday at I O at the old I O on Clark Street, and we went every single week. Me and my my best friend Ryan Asher, we would go every week. Um, and we just looked up to them so much. And then one day, Ryan and I, our two man team, we opened for late 90s. Oh, cool. And Bill, who's on Cook County, mm -hmm. is in the late 90s. And he saw us and he came up after and he was like, You guys were so great. And then I, like, <laughs> embarrassed myself and was like you're amazing you're so funny oh my god and he got so uncomfortable and like walked away but then a couple months later cook county came to town to do a show mm -hmm. a couple shows and they asked us to open for them oh, wow. and that to me was like oh my god it was so huge I, ryan and i were so nervous i just remember like we were walking around Whole Foods before the show, and we saw them all like getting coffee, and we're like, should we go say hi? I'm afraid to say hi, I don't know. And then we're like, we're gonna go into that dressing room, we're gonna sit down and we're gonna talk to them, because we were like so in awe of them, but so intimidated at the same time. But they've always been nothing but nice to us, and um, now I'm like, I feel like they're, you know, I feel as though I'm not on the same level as them, they still feel like above me, but I'm sure. like, I can like see, you know, run into one of them and be like, hey, what's up, how are you? It's so nice to see you, and it, that is like, <laughs> 
mind blowing. I can shake this person's hand and not be awkward. Yes, yeah. <laughs> like I can do a scene with you on. Like I did a scene with Brendan Jennings at the last. Uh, uh, what's the letters to Santa at Second City, and I was like. It was so fun, and I was just like, you used to be so scary to me because you're so amazing and talented and funny, but now I can, like, actually speak when I'm on stage. <laughs> like, looking back on that moment of Jed Eveleth being like, what do you think? I was like, Ugh. <laughs> um, Right now, you're the, you are the coach or you were the coach because the, um, the uh, run just ended. Yeah. Um, of Trigger Happy, yeah. and that's such a fantastic show. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. Yeah. Um, how did you feel when you were asked to coach Trigger Happy? Um, I, I mean, excited. It's very fun. I mean, the, the fact that it's Mick Napier's form, like he started his idea. It's all it's all him. It's um, it was you know it was first just to be asked to be on the original Trigger Happy was. Amazing. I that was very intimidating for me. I was like, I can't believe I'm here doing this and getting to know Mick and becoming friends with him and getting in on like working at the annoyance and that was amazing. So then to be asked is like kind of full circle moment too where it's like and now I get entrusted with a new cast and coming up with a whole new set of rules and coming up with all new triggers. Um so yeah, that was definitely really exciting and very fun to be on the other side. For sure. And it's trigger happy at annoyance. Eight o'clock on Wednesdays. <laughs> um, what's the next mountain for you to climb? Mm -hmm. Well, right now I'm about to get married, and I'm literally my we're leaving in two weeks to go to Virginia for my uh, wedding, and then after the wedding we're driving cross country. What's in Virginia? Where are you going to Virginia? Um, that's where I'm originally from. Oh, okay. Yeah, and my well, we're getting married uh, and in Virginia Beach area okay. and at the we're getting married in a dinosaur park and then our reception's in an airplane hangar. It's gonna be so fun. <laughs> uh and then we're gonna drive cross country to LA and resettle in LA. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh so you're leaving Chicago. I am. Oh holy crap. Which is crazy. I mean, it's definitely yeah, it's weird because it's interesting talking to you about all this stuff because it does feel very full circle that it's like coming here and being so excited to like learn and grow and I've it's this is like that incubator city where people come to really learn the craft and get good at it and um, there's just like unparalleled the comedians out of Chicago over you know the last 50 years it's just like there's no matching like the talent that comes out of the city absolutely yeah. so when you go to LA are you going to do improv out there I'm planning on doing some improv some stand-up just kind of seeing where that leads mm -hmm. um, talking about uh, with one of my friends out there uh, there's a show we do here at IO called your fucked up relationship mm -hmm. we're talking about maybe opening that up in LA as well Oh, okay. Um, so that for sure and then a bunch of Sheebies are going to be out in LA, so we might try and find a Sheebies run at some point. Right now, I'm just trying to <laughs> survive the next two weeks <laughs> to get like all of our stuff moved out of our apartment and then get married. Oh wow! And then drive cross country. You have a busy month ahead of you. Yeah, yeah. We're driving for like a full month cross country, and um, I'm teaching along the way. So I'm going to oh, be okay. teaching in DC, Atlanta, Florida. Texas, like going to different local um, theaters and okay. teaching classes. Okay. Which is gonna be—I'm calling it our money moon because I'm trying to <laughs> <laughs> trying to make money while we're on our honeymoon. The fact that you're able to pull money out of improv at all is is a feat amongst itself. Yeah, sell. you gotta you gotta figure that out eventually. <laughs> um, what would you say? What would your advice be for up and coming female improvisers? I would just say like, oh man, there's. You know, you really got to stay true to who you are and really, also, this is something that I heard so many times when I was starting out, but you have to have a life outside of improv. Sure. You have to have um, interests, hobbies, people, friends, experiences outside of the comedy world. Yeah. Like, I think it's great to absorb as much comedy as you can while simultaneously, like, taking a night off where you go see a movie with a friend or sure. you go get dinner or you um, kind of create a world that isn't solely wrapped in improv because mm -hmm. it just it's really good to have a nice solid grounding mm -hmm. outside of this world because if you tie yourself completely into it it's like what are you pulling experiences from when you're on stage absolutely you need to be able to like have experience it's like that uh seinfeld writers room you know where they mm -hmm. you ever hear about like in the seinfeld writers room they would tell people 
if you get an invitation to something you don't want to go to, you gotta go. Like a baby <laughs> shower or a, you know whatever. Like you have to go because it that gets sounds the like experience. a Jerry thing. To... Yeah, <laughs> I think it's like a Larry David thing. Like yeah, and then you come back and you'll have something to write about. Sure. You'll have a weird experience to like talk mm -hmm. about now. So I think it's like, you know, making sure you're experiencing more than just comedy. Absolutely. Well, Susan Glenn, thank you very much yeah, for joining thank me. Thank you. Best of luck out in LA. Thank you. For sure.